just lost a lot of time there. We're playing a WGM. Oh, this is Tatev. Um, let's play an Alapin Gambit against Taltev. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure she's won U.S. Women's Championships. Native 6. Okay, so what we're going to play is this tricky line of take and bishop d3. So queen h4 actually already loses a piece. It's very tricky, but there's g3. So native 6. Native 6 is actually not the best move. It's, it, it's very tricky, but I'll, I'll get back to this after. Here, I like this. I love playing these positions, actually. Uh, okay. Let's play here just nice e3. If castles, I want to get get them. But we don't have castles. We have c5. I can continue with my evil plan. We got takes, takes. Okay, I'm going to continue with my evil plan of coming out to one of these squares. I think I'll just go bishop takes d4. Queen h4, g3, knight g3, bishop f2. Yes, that's exactly right. On bishop d3, they don't have to retreat the knight. Uh, because of takes, there's check here, but I'll get to that later. This is a 3-0 game. Uh, okay, a6, not much going on. Kind of asking me to strike. I could go queen g3. Hit this. She clearly does not want a castle. Ah, wants me to take her g8. Hmm. Take her g8, queen h6, and g4. I think I should take this. I think I should take this, and I think it will cause some problems. You didn't want to castle because of this like queen h4 idea here, so we got to get them, get them in the middle. Take rook g8, queen h6, knight g4. It's probably still, you know, quite good. I can start with rook d1 though. be good to do this or honestly what if i just go bishop no i can't go bishop e5 okay let's go here so we're threatening now bishop takes b5 check or bishop takes h7 check so i just wanted to be able to get all my pieces in and i feel now if they take okay i, I want to take this at this point this has gone on too long This has gone on too long. So yeah, no, there was really no safety that way. But she was threatening to take d3 and then castle, in which case, probably a little bit more safety. Now, OK, there was no knight g4 anyway. Knight e5 would be great if I got another move. That would do a number of great things for me. It would control g4, g6, pressure here. Pressure here. So knight e5 is at the top of my priority list here. We are no longer down a pawn. Even if b4, I'll probably still go knight e5. Honestly, takes. Rook f6. Bishop f6, knight e7. Seems fun. b4. I mean, I could just move the knight and just kind of go knight e5 next turn. Okay, it didn't happen. I want to go here because I want to go knight e5, like I said. Oh, there's checks. Uh, I don't want to deal with checks. I'll go here. There's rook g6, though, which is a good move. I didn't really see it. Uh, I can't imagine they'd be so safe castled that way, though. I really should just step out of this. Like I should, like last turn, I should have just played King H one. This has been bothering me the whole game. Um, yeah. If Queen takes, then I think Knight five is very strong. There's no more checks to bother me. 
yeah, wait, my knight's now attacking a number of things, but okay, we both have 25 seconds here. So we'll just see what happens, and then we'll review this, because this has been a crazy game. But right now we'll just see what happens. I think this is looking pretty good. I want bishop g5? I wanted... Ah, whatever. Okay, GG. Oh, she wants a rematch. Okay, I'll play her again. <laughs> we'll review them all after. All right, let's play Bush Gas Gambit against Tatev. Tatev? I don't know how to say it. Bush Gas, here we go. <laughs> Knight F3, that's a good line. That's a good line. Trying to play... So not give us the Stafford capture. Trying to play Knight F3 to support D4. Play Queen H5 here. So D4 is still not on the table because I can take it. Um, I can play Knight Takes and after Queen takes D1, collect here. So they would lose that extra pawn. D3, castle long. Okay. They're working on uh, long castles. What I like to do against this, there's a few options. Um, is bishop b I, I mean, I like bishop b4 as one. But I'm trying to think. I have six, take, take, queen d2. Rook e8, long castles. Yeah, okay, I'll play this with knight f6. And if queen d2 now, then I'll play bishop b4, trying to play knight e4. But knight f6 makes sense anyway. I'll be happy to do that. Okay, they went this way. They went short in the end. So now, I think the most important thing to do is to take control of this diagonal before she does. And now I'm threatening to take and take h2, which is what I want. I would love to force g3, which creates a lot of light square weaknesses. If h3, then I probably want to take it. Like, I'm not messing around. I want to take it. Take. There's no knight moves in that position. I would just come back bishop g4, and thanks to this knight, we control it. So h3, take, take, queen takes. There's no knight moves in that position either. Any knight move gets you checkmated. So I think h3, take, 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 I would win. Like, I would just follow that up with h 4 and I would win. So g3, I think, is obliged, in which case I was probably going to go, just go rook e8. The f other option was like queen h3, h5, h4, but it, it appears now that I would get my queen kind of trapped if I put a pawn right there. So, yeah, and I don't have a pin here because this knight defends pretty well. So I think we'll shift our focus from the h file to the middle. Now, of course, if the bishop moves at all, I would play rook takes e2. So how do we want to break through is the question. Because I would have wanted f5, f4, but I put my knight in the way. Knight needs to move. What is the plan? It appears it's hard for white to move. That's kind of what I'm seeing. Like, if you're white, how do you make a move? I guess you want to move your knight. Somewhere. But like here even, like I just make this pin, try to follow it up with an 85. If you can tell, I'm not the biggest fan of 3-0. I like kind of thinking a little bit more. But yeah, hard to make a move. I mean, queen can't move because of this. I mean, yeah, the pawn on g3, like the bishop did its job here. I don't think I have further hits unless I was going to be able to make h5, h4 work, which I could have tried to make work. I mean, queen h5, h5, h4, when my rook was still here, uh, had a degree of sense to it, certainly. Okay, I'm happy to take this, honestly, and knight d5. Now I want to make that bishop move and play rook takes e2. There's no pawn on g2, so this is really soft. And queen d2 is never possible. Like, this is a big issue. 
So knight d5, and more than I want to take this, I want to take this, because that would be a fork here, and then I'd take on e2, and I'd win this knight. So this knight had to move. Knight takes c3, this is check. This is check, is a key point, which is what keeps them alive here. So I can play knight e3, but then pawn takes, they'd be okay. So I probably just have to trade. I probably just have to trade. Queen takes. I probably just have to trade. And, oh, knight takes is smart. Okay, well, I, I can still get my pawn back like this. And I think I'm a little bit better here. I mean, I like certainly my activity, but rook eight, there's just knight of four. Uh, okay, I guess we're just trading rooks then. I don't really have anything. I'm threatening a fork. I'm threatening to hop around here a little bit. King e2 was actually a really good move. King f2 gave me some hopping chances. All right. I think it takes, yeah, I want to play f6. Can I win this knight? Maybe? Let's go that way. d4, I'm just going to hop knight c4. Take that, go. g5, I can keep this locked in. trouble making progress. That could be good. No! <laughs> Alright, that was a good flag. Okay, does you want to go again? Damn. Good flag. <laughs> okay, good games. Uh, okay, let's have a look. Let's have a look at that one and the one before. GG, I'll write in the chat. I think she was the former. Tatev Abrahamian. She's one. I've seen her play in um, US Women's. Uh, no. She has not won U.S. Women's Championships. Okay, but she's very strong. Uh, American woman. So, let's have a look here. Am I running some 1v1s? Sure. Alright, let's have a look. So, here bishop c5 takes knight c6. So, this is our bush gas and knight f3. So, d5 takes, queen takes. Uh, it was played here. Uh, last bush gas we played, uh, my opponent went for this line of d-takes and giving us the our nice Stafford capture. Here we have knight f3, and we must play d5, or else d4 hands them the whole center. So d5 takes, queen takes. Uh, so we stop d4 here. And after knight c3, queen h5, this is very tricky. We stop d4 again, because we have this idea. Takes, takes, takes. And here, this is just equal. Uh, so d4 is not really an option for white. And in the game, my opponent plays bishop to e2, bishop to g4, d3, which is not the most ambitious try because white can try to get in d4. Even if they play d4 right now, though, castles is always a fun response. And what I like to do, I played knight f6, but what I love to do is if I can get an f5 and then knight f6, this pawn does a number of things for me in these lines. One, it gives the idea of f4 takes and knight takes d4, which can um, often be really good. And number two, the control of g4 is often really important and blocking these checks becomes really important as uh, actually analysis of this game will demonstrate. So you'll see here d3 castle g3 knight f6. I just play uh, which takes away the other option. It's not the end of the world. I What I really thought was happening was that she was going to go long because she moved this bishop first. So if like here for example queen d2 my plan was bishop b4 and I've done this before because the point is long castles we have this nasty move knight e4 and using these two pins uh, neither of these pieces can capture that knight and then we're going to be taking on c3 here uh and well i'm actually not sure if that's the best way to do it oh it probably is check probably king d2 and they can hang on for a moment uh rather than getting checkmate immediately but um yeah i mean nonetheless a great position to play here for black 
now that you've torn that open, but an 84, really nice move. So in the game, my opponent played castles, but now bishop to d6, and this is what we want. This is what we want, so it's a shame I didn't win this game. But um, we got control over this diagonal. You've seen, you, you guys have seen me couple queens on h5s with bishops on d6s in a lot of lines. <laughs> Literally, the bush gas has that, and then the von Hennig, the von Popiel, and the Alapin gambits can all have that same sort of attack where you control this diagonal, and then the queen maneuvers to h5. And I love it, having these two diagonals and the queen on h5, because there's just no good way to not get checkmated. I'm threatening bishop takes f3 and queen takes h2. How do you deal with it? If you play h3, I'm going to take it okay, because I control this other diagonal as well. And yes, here's the key point is that um, I control the g4 square so that I can play bishop to g4 in this position and not uh, like lose my queen. But yes, I can play bishop g4 due to that defense and now there's no h-pawn even blocking me. And if pawn takes, queen takes, this knight uh, is frozen because of queen h2. And with that knight being frozen allows a number of things. It allows me to get a rook across here. Uh, it also knight g4, I think, is just the quickest, is one of the quicker knockouts. Um, and putting like a knight or bishop on h2 um, is generally enough to get him. Or, or knight e5, just to swap off for that knight, can also be good. But yes, these attacks are almost always um, working quite well. So realizing that, she plays here g3, which is certainly quite a concession, because now there's uh, all these holes uh, in white's position and uh, that I tried to take advantage of here. So I played here rook to e8, uh, swinging that guy into the game. Rook to e1, bishop to b4. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't really have any regrets about what I play here. Rook to e1, I think this was all... The end. The the feedback is like tearing us apart, but like these moves, as soon as you turn on the engines, are much more sensible and are, are, are much up there. Uh, so here, bishop to b4. And, um, yeah, I mean, my idea is pretty simple. It's actually exactly what I got in the game. But, like, this bishop can't move. This knight will fall. This queen can't move. Um, the knight will also fall. This was from a bush gas gambit. Um, and uh, any bishop move, the point is that I have rook takes e2 and that this knight will fall. Again, because there's no pawn on g2. So, so the pressure down this diagonal can be really, really brutal. Um, I move 12. G5 is a nice idea. What was 12? here yeah g5 i i'm sure it is i i'm not really quite sure what it does i'm not quite, quite sure what it does uh, but it might be interesting bait <laughs> but um you know against strong players like this you can't just play with bait you gotta actually have ideas right um uh, but bishop b4 a3 so i was happy about this take take an 85 i want to make that bishop move and i want to play rook takes e2 and win uh, and in the game, she finds this knight d4 move, which which is very good, and it's another reason why I want my pawn on f5, because very often there's tension here, and if my pawn were on f5 in this position, then knight takes c3 would uh, be very, very good. Bishop takes g4, I would have at minimum pawn takes g4 here, and then uh, the queen and this knight would be hanging, for example. And yeah. So uh, that would be very, very good to have my pawn on f5 in this position, but I don't, and so bishop takes g4 is threatened and is check, which would win my queen, so I'm obligated before I can take any of this stuff, I have to play bishop takes e2, so they're okay. Oh, I had this other option, 85, I didn't even see it. 85, because takes, takes, it's really nice to play against the pawn on g3, not on g2, right? Like in this position, h4 is the only option, there's no h3. h3 would be a very good move, but there has to be h4, and then we're taking this bishop a number of times with with that pawn gone we can maybe get g3 so this is this is probably quite good also c3 is hanging so knight e5 was a very good option still threatening knight takes c3 and also other ideas include c5 trying to make that knight move and also using f3 square so really when i got g3 to happen there were a number of things i could have taken advantage of but yeah it was a shame that i traded queen so quick because so now okay this is like a slightly better end game um, but yeah, just cause like my pawn structure is better here. I guess if you imagine this, I had here, like if I didn't want to trade all the rooks, I, I, I would comment on this. I could play rook e5 and like try to dodge it, but it's not very easy. But yeah, I, I, I have no choice here but to trade the queens. But yeah, this position, an 85 would have made more sense. Okay, traded the queens, take, take, take. Uh, we trade all this. Now you can imagine this, if the knights were gone, I think this is winning for me because I can create a pass pawn with three versus two. Whereas white cannot. This is their advantage, but there's no. This doesn't strike me as um, being able to create a pass pawn because you have these doubled pawns. So any knight trade, I think, wins the game. Knight e5 wasn't a great move because of king e2. Uh, 
Um, yeah, so I'm threatening knight f3 with this fork. I was just trying to hop around because we we're low on time. If king f2, I have knight g4, check. And then I was going to slip in knight e3 because you got to go this way to hold this pawn. Then I was going to slip in knight e3, which would win this pawn. I probably, like my time, yeah, I probably should have just started getting this in the game. So knight e5, king e2, good move. Now she starts hopping around. But this was not a good idea because now I'm going to win that. The knight here ran out of squares. I go to e7 correctly. If I went to e6, then there might have been more squares. But e7, this knight needed to run away. Because now it takes f6, and I'm winning that knight. Yeah, g4 was threatening. If, if I take this, there's g5. And if f5, then I have 6. So, so th they'll escape here. Um, so I play here g5. So there's no escape. Uh, I could have played knight b2 check and taken this. Uh, yeah, I mean, okay, obviously this was just completely winning. Um, but she flagged me. She flagged me. It was a good flag. Um, <laughs> anyway, oh well. This was the, the, the end position of the game. She had 7 seconds when she flagged me. Okay, gg there. We can have a look at the other one uh, that we played, which was also a very interesting gambit that I think was uh, also quite successful. Uh, okay. Yeah, this came from a bush gas. Let me... Uh, you might need an introduction. There you go. The full repertoire, full gambit repertoire, can be found here, where um, I go through, where where you can learn how to play each of these, all the stuff here. But yes, Bush Gas Gambit was is with uh, e4, e5, knight f3, bishop c5, offering this pawn right away. We have knight c6, and uh, if bishop c4, the most common move, knight f6, knight takes e5. If they take it here, this is even worse for black, because, like, you should castle and protect this and then d4, right? Uh, but there's this very fun move, knight c6, uh, offering f7, and takes this, bishop takes f2. Uh, this is all covered on my channel. I have a lot of <laughs> great games in uh, various bush gas gambit lines against um, all levels of opposition. So, uh, yeah, D definitely re re recommend that. Bush gas gambit was, like, my first gambit of, of, of my YouTube channel. Uh, this was... Uh, another one on my YouTube channel, the Alipin Gambit, with d4, d5, bishop e3. I think uh, I'm a little short on Alipin Gambit content, so this might make for some good content here. But I like playing against the French this way a lot, because after takes f3, uh, first of all, they're obligated to accept this. There's r r we're really limiting c5, although c5 is actually still a playable move here, but it's really not obvious, because the bishop seems to be doing a good job just to capture that. Uh, also, what you can do is you can play an AC3, and like Bishop takes D4, and you still get this uh, trade happening. But yeah, so a lot of people don't want to take this in general because it like helps you take here, castles, you get this file, you get the development of the knight. So a lot of people will play an AF6, and takes, takes, Bishop D3. So this is a very interesting position. Um, so what will I say about this? So queen, first of all, a lot of people, even high level, will just blunder with Queen H4 check, which is a pattern we've seen before. If F pawn gone, bring the Queen to H4, that's a check. Um, if you can control the g3 square. In this case, black can. However, it's, again, the secret bishop on e3 can drop back to f2 in this position. There's no queen e4 check, and we are just winning the knight. We're able to take it, not losing the rook. So here, bishop d6, they can play for one more move, but after knight e2, we're actually uh, just winning that knight because we're able to take that knight uh, without moving this pawn. So we are winning that. And in this position, yeah, so they've already lost the knight. Any queen move, we can take that knight. But by the same principle... This knight's on under attack. If if black does like like something random, we actually can't take this. This is a very bad trade for us, right? So that's kind of the, the secret idea here. If you're black, like the best move is like c5. It's like an immediate strike. Uh, but anyway, we'll play knight f3. We'll stop queen h4 and we'll threaten this knight. But so here already after knight f6, knight f3, we've all, most people are playing knight f6 because they think the knight's attacked, uh, or they're playing queen h4 check and losing their knight. But we've already transposed to the position we want, which is this position, take, take, knight of six, bishop d3. And why do we want this position? The, here, I just clicked to the game. Why do we want this position? It's because 
if you guys, you guys you guys have seen uh, videos on my channel before, we can get this out of the Von Henning Gambit, we get this out of the Von Popiel Gambit, we can get this out of the Alapin Gambit. It's the same attack of controlling this diagonal, and we get that out of the Bush Gas Gambit. I was just talking about this. Queenie won, so now if they do this, but she didn't castle in the game. She didn't castle in the game, which made this more interesting. But Queenie won, Queen H4. So the pawn not being on F2 does a number of things. Um, so we, we also got the rook, and we also have this maneuver. And I love this pattern. We threaten h7, no knight movements to, to make threats here. I can't tell you the, the amount of times I've had games that look like almost exactly like this. And we're threatening checkmate as soon as we can make that knight move. So for example, they do something, I don't know, to get that out. We play like now knight e5, for example, and we're already trying to make that knight move, right? So bishop b7, now we can play knight takes. There's no knight takes, we have queen takes h7. If they play queen takes, we have rook takes f6. And yes, we will checkmate them. Also, in addition to knight e5, we have bishop g5. We can overwhelm this knight. There's, They have one knight backing it up. They're going to need like four backing it up to keep one there. Okay, so if you can't stop h7 um, checkmate threats with uh, keeping a knight here, you need to stop it with either h6 or g6. But h6, <laughs> it's it's so funny. The prior game was the same pattern. We have bishop takes h6. We, we have both these diagonals. And the bishop on e3 is better than the bishop on c1. Number one, because it doesn't block the rook, but number two, there's like ideas like queen d4 check sometimes. Uh, queen's not always on h4 right away. Uh, other hits on this diagonal, that can get annoying. King h1 is always a useful move. But bishop here does a great job holding holding all that until um, he needs to sacrifice himself. So yeah, bishop takes h6, and this will checkmate them quick. Rook will come here. It's, yeah, there, there's just no chance, because you need like this knight to move and to have bishop g5 and queen f6. Knight can never move. That knight can never, ever move. So h6 will always lose, and then that leaves g6. And in this given position, I think we actually have knight c6. I don't know how that even happened. But yeah, we can take this. And yeah, I mean, this pin kills. This pin kills. Uh, can also add a knight on e4. Uh, so they really have no chance here. Bishop h6 is also winning the rook. But even if it weren't for that, like let's say I include these moves, right? Okay, so I even gave you a good bishop. And very often that bishop's completely dead. But so other things that can happen here include like the rook stack, or well, first bishop g5, right? We can make this knight move with like, so already in this position, actually, for example, like let's say rook c8, knight takes d7 is winning a piece. Any knight move, we have bishop takes d7. Um, so here, queen takes d7 is losing this. So yes, the queen coming to h4, very, very strong, comes out of a lot of patterns. So that is why Tatev chooses not to castle. She plays knight d7, I develop, c5, queen 1, a6. She's trying to find any moves just to like delay castling. But okay, like your king's not going to be so safe in the center of the board either. So, okay, this is back to the game to be clear. I think like she should have maybe tried to get that way quicker, but it's not so easy. So I bring the queen to g3. Let's go game review actually. Yeah, I'm playing on a laptop. This is my laptop. Uh, but this next to me is my just monitor that I uh, HDMI into where I can see all you guys. Okay, let's go back to the game here. So we have um, a t7, a c3, c5, queen e1, a6, queen g3. So I make this maneuvery to attack this. And if she castles, I'd be like, great, queen h4, and I get this diagonal, right? So what black needs, by the way, to withstand this, what they need to withstand this is to have already have this bishop on f5. They need to have had this on the other side of this door and to control this diagonal. I think like that's the most important thing that, that can really nullify all this. Anyway, in the game, we had queen g3. Oh, and we just had like a slew of errors here. So takes, wow, <laughs> very poorly played game. Bishop e4 was best. So try, So right before uh, you're able to fill that diagonal, there was this idea, take, take. I guess there's knight d6, there's queen takes g7 coming. So interesting position there. That didn't happen. I took, took. What did I miss here? There was some brutal blow. No, rook d1 was best. That was what I played. Bishop d7 take so an 85 was strongest i wanted to play an 85 i thought maybe she could survive with castles but i guess not yeah i guess like you're never really surviving with castles because this pin is just going to get you so this is what happened in the game anyway i took g7 and this was just kind of a wild ride so she was able to get rid of this bishop on d3 but i had grabbed g7 already so now she's looking at a castle this way yeah i mean the king can't say too safe in the middle um so queen c7 Bishop g5, yeah, was not the best move because there's rook g6 here, uh, which is a nice move to fortify your knight and hit my queen. Long castles. I just finally slide out of the way of this, which had been giving me fits. Bishop c6, take queen takes, e5. What did we miss here? Oh, we both missed takes. Oh, using this. Oh, queen d2 check. What a move. 
What a move. Takes and queen d2 check. That's what we both missed. And that was a huge difference in the game. Because she just played an h8. I take, take, take. Uh, I guess I could have grabbed h7 and grabbed even more. But here, okay, we were just in a blitz out. Yeah, not the highest quality. Because uh, we were. Uh, but anyway, I just kind of won the splits out in the end. This was the end. So, yeah, interesting games, interesting gambits against uh, WGM and one of the best uh, female players in America. So subscribe if all that goes on YouTube. This was not OTB. This was, um, we just played just now. So let's keep, let's keep playing. Let's keep. William Grave, the gambit man, takes his seat at the board. E4. E5. Knight F3. Bishop C5. The bush gas gambit on the board. On with the gambit classes. Hero pawn unlocked. 